Hey everyone. So today we are working on um, converting backwards from standard form to vertex form. And you're actually going to be jumping over a couple of pages in your notes. I'm just trying to get that arranged here. Um, so there's a page that says completing the square. We're actually going to do this lesson in class on Friday. Um, this is another way of getting back from standard form to vertex form. But um, I want to make sure we talk about this one in class because there's a lot of discussion that goes into this one. So you're actually going to skip past this page and go to this page here where it just says examples. Okay, I think I accidentally left off the front page of this, but that's okay. It would have just been a bunch of blank space anyway. Um, so what I'm going to suggest is that you go to the back of that page. Okay, That should be totally blank. Now, I've written a couple of things on mine here um, that I'm going to just use as an introduction here. But um, this is where you'll kind of take the beginning part of the notes and then we'll flip back and go to the examples in a minute. So... We've already, these are the two forms that a quadratic could be written in, okay? They could be written in vertex form or what's called standard form. And what we did earlier this week was convert this way. We went from vertex form to standard form just by simplifying. So that was where we foiled and we made everything look pretty, okay? But to get from this to this, we just had to do the math. We just had to clean things up, okay? Um, what we're working on now is going back the other way, okay? It's going backwards from standard form to vertex form. And that is going to be a little more complex because um, you have to somehow pull parentheses out of this and you have to figure out what number goes back on the other side and all of that kind of thing. So there's actually two different ways to do that. Um, there's completing the square, which is that lesson I said we were skipping over for today, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and just mark it down here so you have it for reference. We can use completing the square. Or we can do kind of a workaround also. And for the workaround, we can find what the vertex is. Okay, so from this form, there is a way that we can figure out where the vertex would be located. We can find the values of H and K. And then if we can find the values of H and K, we can plug those back into the vertex form formula um, to, to get our equation in vertex form. So completing the square kind of goes straight from one to the other, and again, that's what we're going to do in class tomorrow. Today we're going to talk about how do we do this intermediate step? How do we do this finding the vertex? And then once we have the vertex, we should be able to just plug it back into the formula. Okay, so just so you have an idea of kind of where we're starting for today. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through one of these as soon as I get rid of my face here. That did not get rid of my face. There we go. Okay, so let's take this example. y equals 2x squared minus 16x plus 29. Okay, that's the example I'm going to work with first. Okay, and I know that I need to find h and I need to find k. So I'm going to start with finding h, and I guess before I do that, I should make sure we understand that this is in standard form. So this is my a, this is my b, and this is my c. Okay? So your first step is always just to find h. Okay? And h has its own little formula, and it looks like this. Negative b over 2a. Okay, negative b over 2a is how you can find your h value. And when I'm talking about b and a, I'm talking about these numbers up here. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight this because this is the only like new piece of information you really need today. Okay, this is the new concept is that I can find h by doing this. So in this problem, I would do h by doing negative b. Now be careful here because my b is already negative, right? So if I were to do a negative, negative 16, that's really just going to be a positive 16, divided by 2 times the a value, which is 2, that's really 16 divided by 4, which is 4. Okay. Now real quick, before I go any further, I'm hoping you didn't need a calculator to do that, but I want you to take a second and type this into your calculator. Okay. I'm going to have an Edpuzzle thing pop up here in just a second. 
and um, ask you, what did you get when you typed this into your calculator? Okay, because there's an issue here we need to watch out for. Okay, so when you typed it into your calculator, if you did this, and I'm going to kind of write this, oh, what do I do here? I'm going to kind of write this off to the side because I don't want it to be on our official notes here. But if in your calculator you typed in 16 divided by 2 times 2, your calculator is taking 16 and dividing it by 2 and getting 8, and then taking that 8 and multiplying it by 2 and getting back to 16. Okay? So in your calculator, what you really want to do is put this in parentheses to tell your calculator it's 16 divided by all of this. Okay? You've got to tell your calculator that you're dividing by both of these things at the same time. Now, I would say probably with 90% of these problems, um, you're going to be able to do the math without actually using your calculator, and that's what I would recommend because your brain is smarter than your calculator. Okay? But if you do need the calculator, make sure that you're putting parentheses around those bottom pieces. Okay, so we have our H. Next step then is to find K. Okay, and K does not have a formula. There is no formula for K. Um, people ask me that question a lot. What's the formula for finding K? The formula is really just the equation you were given in the first place. Okay, this. Because K is just the Y value at the vertex, and this is the X value at the vertex. So if I plug this in place of X, all right, if I put this 4 into my equation in place of X, I'm going to get the Y value that goes along with it, which is K. Okay? So what I am really doing here is putting my X equal to 4, and so I'm going to go 2 times 4 squared minus 16 times 4 plus 29, okay? And it is going to be important here that you put everything, so anytime I'm dropping a number into the equation, see how I'm putting it in parentheses? That's what you want to make sure you're doing as well. I also want to make sure that I have a calculator that works here, okay? So I would go 2 times 4 squared minus 16 times 4 plus 29, and I get a k value back of negative 3. Okay, so this is really saying that k is equal to negative 3. Okay, so if I put together this information, that back here I got that h was equal to 4, and this information, I can now say that my vertex is located at 4, negative 3, okay? If that was the only thing this question asked of me was to get the vertex, I'd be done right now, okay? But let's suppose it asks you one more thing. Let's suppose instead of asking you for the vertex, it asks you to write it in vertex form. And just as a reminder to you, vertex form looks like this. And so all I'm really doing is I'm plugging in H and K. So this is going to be a negative 3. This is going to be a positive, whoops, sorry, not the X, the H. The H is going to be a uh, positive 4. And then the only other number I need is my A value. Okay, and this does throw people off sometimes. But this A value is really always going to be the same as my A value from my original equation, this right here. Okay, so my A value is just going to be a 2. And so when I put that all together, this is going to be Y. Just be careful here, um, because it's minus K, I'm really doing Y minus negative 3, so it's going to be a plus 3, equals my A value is 2, and then X minus 4 squared. And that right there is my final answer in vertex form. So I kind of found vertex form by way of finding the vertex. Okay. Okay, let's try just a couple of these. I don't know that we're even going to do all of the examples here. But flip to the other side here. Okay. This first question just says find the vertex. So step one, 
is to find h. h is negative b over 2a. So I'm going to do um, negative negative 4 is really positive 4 over 2 times, and when you don't have any other number there, that's really going to be a 1. So over 2 times 1. Well, that's really 4 divided by 2, and 4 divided by 2 is just 2. Okay, so that's my h value. Step 2, I'm going to find k by plugging that 2 in for x into my equation. So I'm going to have 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 1. That could go straight into a calculator, but I would recommend putting it all in at once so you don't mess up order of operations. Um, or you can work it through by hand. This is 4. This is negative 8. So 4 minus 8 is negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Um, so this is negative 3. And so then my vertex would just be 2, negative 3. Okay, and I'm done there because this one just asked me to find the vertex, okay? I don't have to write it in vertex form like these next ones. I just have to get to the point where I have h and k. Okay, so let's just try example two and then I think we'll be good for that. So first step, find h, negative b over 2a. So negative negative 8 would be positive 8 and then over 2 times negative 2, well 8 over negative 4 would be negative 2 is the final answer there for h. Okay, And then I'm going to plug this in. Be very careful anytime you're plugging in a negative number. Okay, And you'll notice I always put my numbers in parentheses when I plug them in, but really it's the negative numbers where it matters. So to find k, I'm plugging negative 2 in for x up here. So negative 2 times negative 2 squared minus 8 times negative 2 plus 1. Um, you can go ahead and punch that straight into a calculator, but let's see if I can come up with it. I think it's 9. I'm pretty sure it's 9. So I could pull these together and write my vertex just like I did up there in that last example, but in this one, I do have one more step, and that's putting it in vertex form. So I'm going to go y minus k, okay, so minus 9, equals, remember my next thing would be a, and a is right here, okay? So a is negative 2, and then x minus h, well, minus a negative 2 would end up looking like a plus 2 squared. And so this is equivalent to this, right? If I were to graph them, they'd be exactly the same, okay? Okay, I think we're good. I don't think we necessarily need to do example three. Um, I may throw that to you to give that a try on your own. Um, but your homework for tonight, just to clarify, is gonna be Lesson Master 65A, which is probably a little bit out of order in your packet because I'm jumping around a little bit. So make sure you're looking for 65A, not B. Okay, 65A. Okay, and we'll go over this in class tomorrow and then also talk about completing the square.